Hello everybody and welcome to The Changeover where we normally take hot topics, controversial topics and we debate with each other over who's right and who's wrong. But today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to play a game that I came up with the other day called Tennis Frankenstein <laughs> where we have agreed upon a couple categories which we'll tell you guys in a bit. We've picked our choices for those individual categories and for the first time ever we're going to reveal them to each other where the, then we will argue back and forth until we've either decided on one or if two people have had one then we'll give it to the two people. If we can't decide on one we're going to allow the viewers to comment in the sections down below and you can let us know your pick or who's right. Audience votes. Audience votes. And then in a couple of weeks we'll put out the kind of final results of our official essential tennis tennis Frankenstein player. All right, so the, the categories are serve, forehand, backhand, volleys, movement, mental toughness, and craftiness. So we're going to start off with the first one, and I'll go first since I've brought it up. This Sounds is my good. idea. And we're going to go with serve. And my pick is none other than Evo Karlovic, Dr. <laughs> Evil himself. He doesn't get that nickname for having, not only having a great serve, but he is the, I'm, I'm going to preface this by saying, he is the all-time leader in matches that didn't end with a, what was that epic match, 70-68 in the fifth <laughs> set. So beside those two guys who hit 113 and 90-something in one match, Ivo Karlovic comes in with 78 aces in a five-set match, which is third on the all-time technically, but number one in the hearts of all the viewers. <laughs> he also has 10,500 aces, just throwing that in there. Kirby. Look at you with all your stats. I know, man. Professional. I'm ready to go. Well, I gotta say that I also had Evo Carlos. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that, you know, he has over 10,500 aces across Agree. all surfaces, and he's, um, to throw in another stat is that he is also the leading of all time as far as percentage of first of first surf points won. Mm -hmm. So I do think. You do you remember what the percentage was? I mean, 100 0 <laughs> smacks aces. There you go. I mean. <laughs> so to me, you know, you you got a player like, you know, people say Pete Sampras is the most clutch. Uh, server of all time, and you know, and, and people argue for Roger Federer also, and of course, like I'm not gonna slight Rog in any way, but you anyway, you can't, <laughs> you can't, you can't, the maestro, but um, but I think that Evo, those those numbers don't lie. What right. do you think, Ian? I have John Isner. Okay, why? I mean. And for me, like I don't have a whole bunch of stats to back mine up. Quite honestly, <laughs> if you're six foot ten, or is that what he's listed at now? I think. Yeah, six he might 10. be a legit seven foot. I mean, <laughs> honest, no, honest well, God, I, 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 I stood next to him. Six ten. Dude. Does Evo? I haven't but watched. Evo is six eleven. Okay. Does Evo have the action on his kick serve that Isner has? John obviously has the you know the big bomb. He's got the big flat serve. John's kick serve is ridiculously dirty. So you could back up and take it. Yeah, like yeah. in the third row of the stands, <laughs> maybe. I mean, so yeah, I had like Sanford and Federer as like honorable mention because they have amazing variety and a lot of different kinds of serves. But at six ten with that kick serve and that flat serve, I went went with John Isner. But with uh, two choices for Karlovic, it looks like that's their serve. They're pretty much oh, yeah. the same type of serve. Yeah, well, I guess. Yeah, so I guess we can. The, the height and the, you're just looking at a totally different kind of, of serve. It's of serve. It's an atypical yeah. ball that's coming at Who you. Who wouldn't a bomb pick that? That's coming yeah. from right. seven feet down into the court. I mean, <laughs> to at least seven feet. It's like <laughs> terrifying. So uh, let us know your serve choice. If you could pick one serve to have as your own personal serve, let us know in the comments down below. All right, what's our next one? Uh, our next one will be. Forehands. So we'll go in reverse order. Forehand. All right. So I don't like picking the popular choice, but what's the popular choice? Federer. <laughs> I mean, yeah. for like everything. Uh -huh. But I had to pick Federer on this, especially thinking back to you know his like 2006, 2007, 2008 
years. It just seemed like every time he had a ball to the right side of his body, he was either taking over the points or hitting a winner. He was just totally automatic during those couple years. And I can't, you know, from my own viewing experience, my own experience as a fan, I can't remember anybody else. There's other players with huge forehands, you know, Fernando Gonzalez or Verdasco, but the, none of them, no, none of those kinds of players with gigantic forehands ever had the precision that over a longer period of time that Roger, Roger had. So again, no stats. I'm just going with my gut. Federer for the for the forehand. Kirby? Fred for the win. I'm going to go with Rafa. Interesting. <laughs> Which awesome. I, know I love it. I love it. I'm not appreciative of. Dude, it's um, the worst. Why, why Rafa? Because, because of this. On the same theme as, as Ivo Karlovich, you know, it's a different ball that's coming your direction. I think for the sheer amount of spin that he has on the ball, like he has 4,900, he can get up to 4,900 RPMs on a ball hit with a lot of topspin as opposed to Roger who's hitting on average consistently 2700 RPM. So you're choosing just based on topspin? Based on topspin and his leftiness because you leftiness. Know, I mean as lefties, <laughs> you know, you, there's no denying that. So it's a very elite club. Well. So obviously. All right. All right. <laughs> now that now that we've got now that we've gotten that out of the way. Leftiness is a good point by the way. It's it's a good uh, good well, it opens up the court in, in a totally different way. I think, yeah, different look. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, that makes sense. I'm going with Delpo. Delpo, yeah. Dude, wow. I mean, he just rips it. I mean, if, like, I'm basing this not on... Not on injury. On, on if he's, yeah, if, he, if he's playing well and his forehand's on, he's got one of the most, if not the deadliest forehands in the game. Uh, it's big, it's flat, it penetrates the court. <laughs> like nothing I've really ever seen. I mean, yeah, when he's off, he's not great. And when Federer's forehand off, he's not great. And when Rafa's forehand is off, it falls inside the service line. But, and Delpo is, can be very inaccurate. But if he's on, man, it's watch out. I mean, that's, that's pretty much All it. Right. So we need an audience vote for this because we have three totally different answers. So let us know what you think down below. It could be one of our choices or it could be somebody totally different as well. And we'll tally up the votes and see what the ultimate Frankenstein uh, choice is. The essential tennis Frankenstein the, uh, choice. Essential sorry, tennis essential, Frankenstein. yeah, essential tennis Frankenstein. The All right. tennis monster. Next up, backhand. And Kirby, you're going to start this one. All righty. Okay, so backhand, I have Novak Djokovic. Boring. <laughs> It might be boring, but I... I mean, it's I, not a bad backhand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, not can't say it's a bad, bad choice. Backhand. It's reliable, and he can do the amount of variety that he has on his backhand in the game right now, I think, is unparalleled. That's my choice for my tennis monster. Okay. Ira? Uh, I'm rolling with Tip Sarevich. Tip Sarevich? Yeah. He, Dark uh, horse what? choice. Yeah. Wow. Why, Where did that come why tipsy? From? Dude, he, he's got a great motion. There's no wasted movement. I it's like reliable. It. It's consistent. <laughs> it, he can hit with spin. De uh, he can hit flat. He, uh, he, he has a lot of variety with it. Like, he's creative with it. Uh, I, I, would, I would have said that when he was playing, he was in top five backhands. I struggled between him and Davidenko. Uh, I, I, I liked his backhand, oh, but yeah. Tipsarevich is just sweet motion, and Safin was in there too, but mm. Tipsarevich for me. You're picking a lot of wow. players who are on the injured list a lot. No, they're not injured. Tipsarevich is done. He's, he's living the good life <laughs> now. <laughs> he's not coming back. Interesting <laughs> choice. I like it. All right, so I, I could not in good conscience pick a two-handed backhand. Yeah, that's fair. For, for, best, for best backhand of all time. There's some, some amazing two-handed backhand strokes, obviously. Djokovic, for me, by the way, I feel like he, I mean, he gets in his weird, like he kind of breaks down from the baseline sometimes. He has his off you know, games. Djokovic, to me, doesn't have the most visually appealing baseline game. So, um, yeah, but he makes it work. I, I, I mean, li yeah, I listen, I'm, I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to say that he, he's got problems or anything. But, uh, yeah. Because you got problems. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going based on my personal aesthetic choice. And so, for those reasons, I pick Gustavo Kirton 
for best what? backhand. Or no, Frankenstein backhand, I'm sorry. Well, for aesthetic reasons, if, I'd pick him too. <laughs> if, I could, if I could hit <laughs> I the backhand like, 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 like any player, it would be Guga. Just because the smoothness and the length, the fluid, fluidity of his swing is uh, just really beautiful. So it sounds like Kirby. Could I, maybe can I convince you, Guga? <laughs> That's Frankenstein no, back no. in? Maybe. <laughs> no. No, that, that's a, that is a split decision. All right, so, <laughs> so three different decision. choices again. So uh, uh, Frankenstein backhand, leave us your choice down below. What's next, Ira? Uh, next up are volleys. Now, is this net game or is this volleys? This is volleys, net game as a whole. It's just, that, okay. yeah, it's not like just stand there and hit 40 volleys okay. when somebody's feeding you the ball. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. So I, I but got you're it. including overhead in this. And uh, yeah, net, sure. Net game volleys. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, I have to take a look at my notes for a second. I'm rolling <laughs> with <laughs> Roger, <laughs> Roger Federer. Uh, sorry. Why that, did you I have to look at your notes for that? No, listen, listen, listen. All right. Not only does he have great hands, he has a uh, good thought behind all of his volleys, whether they be a touch shot, a dry volley, uh, an angle volley. Uh, so there's a lot of good thought. When he comes to the net, he typically, typically wins the point. Uh, he also has one of the best overheads, most accurate, wins a lot of points off him. And, and on top of all that, he is probably the best half volleyer I've seen. Coming forward, that, I consider that in a net volley game, but best pickups, great hands, all around, best volleyer, top five all time. Kirby. I'll give you top five all time. Of course, but I'm going to go for Pete Sampras when it comes to the volley game. So I know the argument already, but I was like, man. <laughs> <laughs> but so you know, Pete won seven Wimbledon's, and I know Roger has won seven also, and he—that's not to say. That I was going to say, hey, where are you going with that? <laughs> but I—I I think that as far as you know, he is so characteristically a net player and Roger can play the baseline he I think of him more as, as an all quarter than Pete Sampras so well yeah the edge I'm gonna give it to Pete all right in his prime though I'm, oh. <clears throat> I'm getting all jumbled I just love his net game no problem what do you, what do you, what do you love more Pete's net game or Guga's hair Pete's oh, net game. Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> All right. Let's uh, get back on the topic here. So my, my choice is Pistol Pete Sampras also. I mean, is there good There's body? nobody like more solid. I mean, if, if I had to bet my life on one person in the world coming to the net, no, no disrespect to Federer. I mean, he's got a great net game. Yeah. But no Sampras. 1A, 1B. All you need to do is look at that Nike poster. With the with the overhead, oh. you know, where he's, I mean, come yeah. on. I mean, yeah. you've seen Federer with that overhead pose. Yeah, he copied copied Pete. I bet Federer looks <laughs> exactly. better. That's Federer, such a good point. Federer Pete, looks better. Pete is Federer's idol. Yeah, but that that's uh -huh. that's. Uh, well, it doesn't matter. The San Francisco wins. Two to one. Yeah. All right. All right. But let us know your uh, your Frankenstein uh, net net play choice down below. All right. Uh, three more to go. The next one is mental toughness. So you can explain what you include in mental toughness, uh, but Ian, you're gonna start. All right, yeah, so uh, I would include, uh, kind of like I said a second ago, if I, if I had to bet my life on one person coming to the net, Sampras to me, again, is just the most clutch player, especially on his serve. Maybe not so much on return, but on his serve especially. He mixed up his serve so, so well, and he was just so even never ever got rattled, at least not externally. Obviously we all deal with nerves during uh, big moments, but he was just Iceman, you know, no matter what. No, no matter what the situation was, and you could rely on his serve and his serve and volley game, no matter what the situation was. So my pick was Sampras. In, in a clutchness factor. Yes. Okay. Clutchness. Yeah. Okay. Clutchness factor is very high with Sampras. Kirby? This was really, really tough one for me. Oh, by the way, I, yeah, I really wanted to say Nadal, but his recent Nadal has been yeah. that, that has been my choice in this category for many, many years. But the, his last year or so, I feel bad picking Sampras, but so thanks. Well, for we'll mind. get into totally the Nadal agree. thing and why he's declining later. <laughs> well, oh boy, I, I, I <laughs> totally agree. Nadal is. We could have talked about that a little while ago, but you know things have changed now. So 
It's unfortunate. For me, I had to, I'm split between Roger and Pete. And I'm going with Roger. I just think that's a mistake. <laughs> I'll be honest, but it's going, it gives you a reason. <laughs> with Roger, I think that to win 17 Grand Slams during this golden age of tennis, uh, that speaks volumes to me on his mental toughness. I mean, now again, it's neck and neck for me. It's that's a really tough one, but I'm giving Roger the edge. All right, we could, you and I are doing a changeover on this. Pete Sampras. Right. So Versus Roger Federer. Let me so, let, Roger yeah, Federer. Who's more mentally tough? Okay. Let me you enlighten you guys a little bit. Tim Cerovich. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I. You could argue. Uh, I'm going. I'm going against all what everybody thinks I would ever say. But I'm rolling with Rafa on this one. Wow. Uh, the guy, I mean, uh, you know, I don't like it. I'm, I'm a Federer guy. I don't like Rafa too much. Uh, <laughs> but the guy is tough. He always, like, I can only count on this from a, an outside perspective because I'm not inside the mind of those guys. Um, but he always, he appears to be the one in the court that always wants it the most, no matter what the situation is, no matter how bad he's hurt yep. or his body is declining <clears throat> now. I just don't think, I can't really attribute his decline now to strictly mental toughness. I think it's more of a body uh, issue for him because I, he's I getting... Wish, I wish I had thought of this angle, actually. He's, he's getting off steroids now. Oh, jeez. <laughs> what I think. We're getting sued now. That's my opinion. <laughs> Ira's opinion. His my personal opinion. opinion. I'm reflective of his uh, so, <laughs> so, so I think it's more of a mental tough... I mean, the, guy, the guy's a fighter. He always has been since he was young. I'm rolling with Rafa. So we have three different answers. We'll let it go to the audience comment section and we will find out in a week or so when we stay up keeping with all these uh, comments we'll get back to you and finish our Frankenstein all right next one is last one right no two more oh two more we'll, we'll go right. quick on these last two uh, movement and uh, Kirby go ahead this is easy Roger Federer I think that he is the benchmark of an efficient mover on the court and to me, yeah. it's, it's absolutely, it's even, his movement is so efficient and so good that he's changed the way that we look at the game. He's changed the way that we teach tennis as a profession through his recovery and his, he's just, you see, as he gets into the tournament, he moves so efficiently that he literally runs miles less than his opponents mm -hmm. by the time that he gets into those later rounds because he is that efficient. So to me, unparalleled. No way it's anybody else. I, I could see Djokovic as a, as a great mover and some other guys, but tried and true Roger Federer. That's a good pick. Go ahead, Ian. All right, so I'm going... Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, you guys probably won't see this one coming. Um, and, I, you, know, you know, Roger, obviously, you can choose him for any of these things. But, and, and, I, and I don't disagree, he's obviously a smooth uh, mover and efficient. But the person I'm going to pick, I've enjoyed watching. I really, really appreciate anticipation. Uh, I love a player who's constantly trying to be inside his opponent's head and pick which way the next shot is going. And this player, more than any other that I've watched or studied, and during you know, my super slow I, motion I, uh, filming, etc., I just love watching his movement, and that's Andy Murray. Oh, seriously? Yep. I didn't see that. Yep. Andy Murray? <laughs> yep. Movement wise, yeah. I, if I could move like one player, it would be it would be Andy Murray. And maybe I'm gonna have to go back to the tape on that. Dude, I'm not going back to the tape. I already seen enough of that. 100 percent for me, Andy Murray. It's not that I turn down Federer's movement or or Djokovic's or whoever, but I love watching Murray move around the court. He's super smooth. I love his anticipation. That's my that's my answer. All right, uh, I'm going against the grain. I'm going well. It's not really against the grain. Oh my god. I'm going with Monfils. I mean, how could I, I you thought not? Of him. I thought so of him. you were talking strictly mute he's movement. All over the boys. He's but he, like a yeah, cell. that's but, why I picked Murray. But, he's, but that's the thing. Like he is not only huge; he's unbelievably coordinated. He's he's the quickest and fastest play, player on the tour. I don't have that's probably true. I don't have the forty times of him, but I guarantee he's the quickest, most athletic, fastest 
probably most flexible. He generates the most amount of power from his body and yet he still does these amazing acrobatic moves and seems in balance 95% of the time. I mean, if, and, and from an anticipation standpoint, I mean, he didn't even need to anticipate nah, so he's fast. A, I, yeah, I was weighing those two, and for me, he's just too much of a goofball. But that, like, yeah, but, 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 but goofball or not, that has no bearing on his movement. I mean, his movement, just because but he's a nutcase doesn't mean he's know, not a great mover. If you can mover. separate those two things, then, then, I, then I, I think it's a good pick. Oh, yeah, he's you. got the agility, but it's, it's this fluidity. Even though you disrespected my Murray pick. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, Andy Murray? Yeah, <laughs> movement, absolutely. All right, all right, How great though would it be if you could, at the beginning of every season, have a combine with all of these guys? <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, that would be I, awesome. And, you know, it would be especially great for, for all the betters online, too. All right, uh, so we yeah. got a split, split pick then. So you need to let us know in the comments down below. Uh, movement, who would your personal choice be? If you could take any person's movement, let us know in the comments down below. Mm -hmm. All right, last one. We are going with craftiness. And I'm going last because <laughs> I got a good answer. I mean, answer. I don't think there's a better answer than mine. Okay. Well, I don't think there's a better <laughs> answer. Kirby, go ahead. Fabrice Santoro. He is the craftiest guy that I've ever seen on a tennis court. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I, I, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. I, and Santoro, yeah. Santoro I mean, is pretty amazing. But the, the guy is like, you know, he can just do anything with the ball and the amount of spin and, and the racket head control that he has is something that you just don't see, not just every day, but even in a lifetime. I don't even think Monfils can, can mm. compete with that. They called him the magician, right? The magician, that's right. That's why I also picked Santoro for craftiness. Okay. I mean, the, the guy hit shots that nobody, like he just made, he hit shots that, you don't, you don't often see other professional tennis players just get frozen because they just had no idea what the hell just happened from their opponent. It's Santoro would routinely hit shots where it was, they, like the, their, his opponent would just watch because it was something completely unexpected and out of the ordinary. So yeah, I gotta go with Santoro. All right, uh, well this is, you know, they, they got two, so I'm gonna give them the win, but <laughs> I'm rolling for the second time only with Roger Federer. Uh, and and there's, there's five reasons why, okay? Five it's, reasons Listen, listen, why? it's the who, what, when, <laughs> where, and why of okay. Roger Federer's crafting is. Now, in movement, I separated mindfulness or being aware and, and physicalness. And, but I think crafty, you have to compete them. There's no doubt that Santoro was a crazy, he could hit some unbelievable shots. But he all, that's all he, that's what he, you know, he was a one trick pony. You know, it, there was, it was always this. He didn't really play like a, a straight up tennis game. So yeah, he, he is an amazing touch player. However, Roger Federer knows, oh, I, gotta, I gotta reread this, it was so good. Who, <laughs> so he knows good. who, how to, how to hit certain crafty <laughs> shots against certain types of players, because everybody moves differently. He, he approaches each player differently. Uh, he <clears throat> does the what, he knows what type of shot to hit, whether it's a drop angle or if it's a, a short slice. Uh, to draw them in, to, to bring them close. Uh, the, when, when to do it in a match. He was amazing at like, he hit a lot of shots that people couldn't get to just because they weren't expecting him in that moment. Uh, the, the where, he could place them anywhere. And uh, why, he had purpose behind him. You know, there was always a legitimate reason, whereas I feel like Santoro just threw him in. He was more of an entertainer with his ma magical shots than like a, an actual <laughs> an actual like careful co competitor on the on the on the higher ranks of the tennis players. So I'm going with the all encompassing Roger Federer. Yeah, but you got to consider, you know, yes, they're different caliber of players. Roger Federer, obviously, you know, in contention, if not indisputably greatest of all time. Fabrice Santoro also has the highest number of wins over top ten players. And it's because of his craftiness. And no, I, I, I said he could hit crafty shots. I mean, that's, but that's, that was his thing. That was my opinion. Like, that's his, that's his kind of like one trick. And he's really, really good at it, no, no doubt. Which I makes just, him creative. All right, there you go. Santoro for the win. So uh, the ones we, we picked already were, were craftiness. Uh, which other ones did we agree on? Uh, serve. Craftiness, serve, folly? I don't remember. 
Let us know what your uh, picks are down below. We'll, we'll put up a little graphic or something. James, you got that, right? Sure. Uh, to let you know uh, which ones have already been chosen for the Essential Tennis Frankenstein. The ones that we need your input on, please let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do us a favor and click like. And of course, all of your comments and questions go down below. Thanks for watching. Take care. Talk to you all again soon. For hundreds of free digital tennis lessons, head over to EssentialTennis.com right now. More wins and more fun on the court is right around the corner. You'll even get a free gift just for stopping by. Simply click the link at the top of any page.